Hey guys, welcome back to DeFi Kingdoms. In this video, I'm going to go through the typical routine I follow when playing the game. As much as possible, I do this three times a day at approximately eight hour intervals. And if you're a new player, this will hopefully give you an idea of what it's like to play the game. So the first thing I always do is to pull out the Jewel USD chart. And here you can see this is the four hour chart and the past day or so, the market price has been rallying Actually, over the past two to three days over here, you can see the market price has been rallying quite aggressively. And this is information I can use to help me make better decisions when playing the game. So after checking out the price chart and getting a sense of where the market price is and where it has been recently, I can now move on to the next step of my routine, which is to go to the professions area over here. Okay, right now we only have profession quests. We do not yet have adventure quests or PVP. So this is an area that I would be focusing on right now. Okay, so the first thing I do once in the professions area is to check and see if I have any of the quests that need to be completed. As you can see here, all of these quests here, the forager, the gardener, fisher and miner have this exclamation mark over here. And this means that there are some quests that have been completed. So I need to manually go in to these quests and to complete them. So you can see these are the heroes that I have assigned to this quest. So this particular attempt has been completed as well as a couple of others. All right, so I'm just going to complete them right now as part of my usual routine. So after completing that quest, you will see the pop-up here. So these are the quest rewards and the XP given to that hero that completed that quest. So here is some rock wood, Gaia's Tears, and so on. So when you complete a profession quest, your heroes will receive some amount of XP, increase, hopefully increase their skill at that particular profession, as well as receive the in-game rewards. So these are materials that can be used to make potions and so on. And later on, the game will introduce more mechanics to use these materials, okay? So I have just completed this quest and I will go ahead and complete the others. Okay, so the second round of quests have been completed and these are the rewards. Let me go ahead and complete the third set of uh, quests done by these heroes. Okay, so here are the rewards of these quests done by these heroes. I'm now just going to move on to the last round of foraging heroes. And I'm going to complete that last round of quests for right now. Okay, so in this case, we can see this particular hero got me a kind of a rare item here. So this is a Shavas rune, and this is used to level up your heroes. And right now, I believe this rune is being sold for about 20 to 23 US dollars. So generally quite a good run over here for these past few foraging quests. Next, I'm going to complete my fishing quests. And so let me run through the same process. Okay, so the first round of fishing quests have been completed. And as you can see here, the rewards for fishing quests tend to be different compared to the rewards from the foraging quests. And you can see generally these are all fish, which will uh, or which can be used for potions and items later on as well. And here you can see I got another Shivas rune, so that's great. So, so far, at least $40 worth of quest rewards. And now let me go and complete that last round. Okay, so last round completed. Now I have completed all of the foraging and fishing quests. And as you can see, there is no more exclamation mark. So that means that there is no 
quests left to be completed. So right now I'm left with mining and gardening. So let me go ahead and check out my mining heroes. Okay, so this has completed. You can see time remaining zero. So I can co collect these heroes right now from the mining quests and see what rewards they have dug up for me. Okay, so mining quests are inherently different from foraging and fishing. So you can see here, there are fewer items that have been dug up. I got some Gaia's Tears here, but other than that, generally no other items. And instead, I got some amount of jewel. You can see 1.38 jewel, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 jewels. So all of these jewels come from my locked balance. And that's generally what jewel mining is for. Okay, so let me go ahead and complete the other jewel mining quests. Okay, second round of mining has been completed. And as you can see here, I got more guys tiers as well as one more ruin. So that's about $60 in total right now. Let's see if we get any more as we complete more quests. I mean, now complete that last round of jewel mining. Okay, last round completed. Just some amount of jewel received from my locked balance. Okay, so now mining is complete. And before I go on, I want to bring up the point that for the mining quests, there are two kinds. So I've just showed you what I did for the jewel mining. But if and when you run out of locked jewel, you can then focus on gold mining instead. And here, instead of unlocking your locked jewels, you will just be mining for gold. But the process is pretty much the same. Okay, so now that I'm done with the three types of quests, the last type is gardening. So let me just complete this gardening quest. So you can see here, I have six heroes. So I'm just going to complete them and see if I get any rewards from these gardening quests. Okay, first round completed. I got some amount of jewel. So these jewels that I get here are not coming from my locked balance, which is what is the case with mining. This amount of jewel comes from the quest fund. All right, so this is all coming from the game. And you can see here, I got more uh, tiers and this item here, blue stamp that can be used to make probably over here, mana potions. So once again, the type of items you get from the various profession quests will differ based on what those quests are. So you will not be getting blue stem, for example, from foraging or from fishing, okay? So let me now just go ahead and finish up the rest. One more thing about gardening is that the more you have in your liquidity pools, and if you assign your gardening hero to guard it in that particular pool, you will get a higher amount of jewels as a reward. Okay, so at this point in time, I do not have a large amount in LPs right now. I'm mostly in the bank. So you can see my rewards will not be very high from the gardening quests. And depending on how the market moves and depending on the sentiment, I may allocate my funds back into the liquidity pools. And if I do that, then the heroes that perform the gardening quests will earn more jewels for me. Okay, you can find out more details about this in the official documentation if you haven't already. I highly recommend checking it out. Okay, done. So in this case, I got a spider fruit, okay, as well as again, some XP and my gardening skill has increased for this particular hero. So let me just quickly finish up the rest of these questing heroes.
Okay, so now the last hero has completed his final quests. And so you can see here, all of the exclamation marks are gone. And at this point, what I will usually do is check on the total amount of quest rewards in terms of US dollars I've made so far throughout the day. Okay, so let me just go to the DFK tracker website. Okay, and here you can see so far for today, I've made about $496 in revenue from the quests. And this is significantly higher than usual. I'm not sure why this is the case. I'll probably have to check out the items that I've gained. Maybe there's some kind of a, a item, a big item that I missed. But generally, you can see here, I make an average of about $250 or so per day from my quests. And so far, this is the second round of quests I've gone through. And usually I will wait another eight hours or so, usually before bedtime. So now let's go back to the profession area. And this is when I will start looking to start some quests. Okay, so I've completed some quests and I may have some heroes that have some extra stamina. So I'm just going to check out the hero list that I have. And if I have heroes with stamina that has not been used, this is when I will start assigning them to the various quests based on their affinity with the various types of quests. So as with all other aspects of the game, you can optimize the rewards you get from profession quests. And to do that, you have to first understand which heroes are good for which particular quests and to assign them to a questing schedule that works best for you. Okay, so this concludes the questing aspect of the game. Okay, so the next thing I typically do is to head over to the meditation circle because here is where you can level up your heroes. And since my heroes have just completed some quests, some of them may meet the threshold at which they can level up. So let me just go ahead and click on this little guy over here, enter the circle and see which of my heroes I can level up. Okay, so you can see here, there are at least three heroes I can level up because they have just completed those quests that allow them to fill up their XP bar. So I'm just gonna run through one example here for you to take a look at. Okay, so here in this case, I have a warrior and so I'm gonna select him. Okay, sorry, I mean the main, um, not, not, not the subclass, but the main class is warrior. So at this point in time, my preference for a warrior is to level him up with vitality. Okay, this is a plus guaranteed plus one to the stat, as well as strength and dexterity. So your choice of these bonus stats will determine how your hero evolves throughout the game. I'm not going to go through exactly what these stats do. This would probably require a whole other video on its own. And for now, I'm just going to level up the hero and see what happens. Okay, so I have just confirmed the MetaMask prompt. And now I'm just waiting for this to load and to see how my hero will level up in terms of the stats that it gets. Okay, so let's complete the meditation ritual. Okay, so you can see here, these are the addition to the hero stats. So I have a plus one to strength, a plus three to dexterity, plus one to vitality, plus one to endurance, and plus one to wisdom. So this is just for one hero, and I will complete the same process with all the other heroes that I want to level up that has reached the maximum XP level that enables them to level up. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you by going through the whole process. Instead, I'm going to take you through the next step of my routine. Okay, let's go back to the world map. Okay, and the next part of my routine is to head on over to the portal and click on the Arch Druid because here I can see which of my Gen 0 heroes are free to be able to summon a Gen 1 hero. Okay, so the summoning process has produced a hero NFT crystal and I'll go to the summoner and to open up the crystal after the cooldown finishes. Okay, let me now open up the crystal and see what kind of hero comes out of it. Okay, so this is a pirate. And after summoning this hero, I will then put down his particulars and his stats into a spreadsheet. Okay, so once that's done, I will typically head over to the gardens here and check on the status of my liquidity pools. So it's over here at the seed box. 
And this is the list of all the liquidity pools. And of course, I won't be showing you the details here uh, because obviously I don't want to dox myself. And I'll check on the APR number here to see if it's still healthy and if I should stay in this pool or move to other pools or to just remove liquidity from the pools entirely. So this is just a quick check on the liquidity pools. And after I've done that, the last step I will make is to head on over to the tavern and see if there are any good heroes that I can scoop up at a discount. So typically I will check a few different types of heroes. First, I will check all Gen Zero heroes. And as you can see here, it's a list of Gen Zero heroes. Right now, the floor price is 2,500 jewel, which is really, really low. So depending on what I'm looking out for, I may or may not purchase one or two of these heroes, depending on my expectation of the future. And after checking on the Gen Zero heroes, I will then check the Gen 1 heroes that are of the legendary rarity and above. Okay, so I'll go ahead and check that. And after doing that, I will check the Mythic Gen 1 heroes, as well as the Legendary and Mythic Advanced class heroes over here. Okay, so once again, I don't want to go into too much detail here because this is meant to be a general overview of my routine. If you would like me to make a more detailed video about any of the aspects I covered in this overview video, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, so once I've checked out the tavern for heroes to purchase, I will then go over to the sell heroes section here and to sell any of the heroes that I intend to let go. All right, so this concludes the general routine I follow about three times a day. Sometimes I skip one or two of these routines because let's say I'm busy, I'm going out, so I don't have the time to do all three of them in a day. I will generally follow this routine at least twice a day. Okay, so with that said, I hope this has given you a good overview of what it's like to play the game at this time. This whole routine will probably change when the adventure quests and when PvP comes out. Okay, so this concludes the video of how I typically play the game of DeFi Kingdoms. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.